Okay, good morning, students. Welcome to week four of our class on marriage and family. Hope all of you are doing well. Uh, a warm welcome to the uh, e-learning students as well, as you all have uh, come in week after week to join us with the class. Uh, trust that you're keeping pace and are blessed by the course. Um, so we let's get started, and uh, I'll start with a word of prayer, and then we'll do a quick recap of what we did <clears throat> last week and move on with our class uh, for today. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Shira. Good morning, Nina. Right, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you for your grace and your mercy over each one of us. Thank you for sustaining us, Lord, through the last one week. Lord, we look to you even as we explore uh, further things about your foundation about marriage. We pray that uh, you would give us open hearts, you would give us open minds. You would give us, Lord, the ability to unlearn things that we may have learned through our experience or uh, through teaching that's been erroneous, Father. Lord, we pray even as we look into your word that... Uh, you would uh, lift us up, you would convict us, you would help us, Lord, to live according to what you see marriages. Um, thank you for the students who joined in. Pray, Lord, for those who are yet to come. Lord, uh, pray for the each of the e-learning students as well. Lord, thank you that you know each of them, you know their hearts. Lord, you know their ways, God. I pray that you will continue to bless and uphold each one. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so welcome once again. Um, so before we get started, uh, a quick uh, recap about what we did the last time. Um, we've been looking at uh, uh, the foundation of marriage, looking at uh, the biblical foundation, we're kind of um, uh, establishing what God has said about marriage and this institution. And so we're looking through different <coughs> kinds of topics. And from here on, um, we're getting specifically into uh, more deeper uh, core aspects about what marriage is. So before we get there, um, would, would somebody like to recap about what we did last week? Anyone? What were some of the, just pointers is, is good enough. At least one or two points, one point per person can help us uh, you know, figure out that everyone has been awake in class and has, and has also uh, probably read through some notes. Yes. There is a there different, different realms of compatibility, okay. spiritual, okay. emotional, intellectual, mm -hmm. physical, and uh, physical compatibility. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. All right, anybody else? We learned about how to make a choice and uh, warning signs. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Good. One more person? Uh, we saw about Isaac and Rebecca, like mm -hmm. from the story of Isaac and Rebecca, we saw that it depends on the willingness of the person. Mm. And we also saw how to do the seeking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so the last chapter was all about uh, guidelines, practical <clears throat> and biblical guidelines on how one makes a choice. And we did look at, uh, as Nina said, certain realms of compatibility. How do you check to see uh, whether you're compatible with others? You looked for red, uh, red flags or signs that uh, signs that you would reconsider potential dangers on uh, or potential problem areas that you would need to be careful about. Um, we also looked at how um, uh, you know the concept of is there this one and only person that God's kept for me. We answered that question through the story of Isaac and Rebecca. We uh, looked also at how God guides and what we could do, uh, how we could depend on God's guidance through his word. 
um, through the Holy Spirit as well as through renewing of the mind and the reasoning God's given us. And also we certain guidelines of how um, uh, how it is important to stay prepared. And it's not just about the wedding day, day but also uh, how, what are the guidelines we keep during an engagement period. And last we spoke about singlehood, about what are some of the reasons for singleness, okay? All right, great. So today we're, we're going to be um, looking at chapter four, and uh, this is on page, um, I think um, in, in the book, it's different from uh, the PDF, which is on 38. So we're at 38, the book, if you have the book with you, it is on 39, okay? So today we're going to, like I said, we're going to get into a little bit more deeper into um, uh, uh, in, into how and, and what what happens or what takes place in marriage and how uh, through biblical understanding how we can navigate that and uh, uh, so we, we've been looking at oneness and how you build um, uh, the the man and the woman coming together as one flesh so one way to progress into that place of unity or into that place of oneness is by fulfilling the roles that God has instituted in marriage, which is the roles for the husband as well as the wife. So there are specific instructions that scripture gives on um, to a, a husband and to a wife on what their roles are towards each other, towards their family, and towards marriage uh, uh, and institution as a whole. So we, what we're looking through this is to understand what God expects of the husband and wife and how the uh, husband and wife can come together as well as be able to live the roles and and uh, really enjoy that process of marriage. Okay? So before we get there, before we talk about it, it's important that we establish a specific core or a specific truth that the Bible talks about in marriage, which is uh, what what is what we would find in First Peter, verse um, First Peter chapter three, verse seven, and uh, uh, it is to establish the truth that both the husband and the wife are equals and they are joint as before God. So let's just read that scripture and then we will unpack that a bit. Could somebody read First Peter chapter three, verse seven? First Peter. Chapter 3, verse 7. Anyone can unmute and read it out. Anybody? The same. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The same goes for you, husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. I'm reading uh, from the message translation, which is in the book. Honor them, delight in them. As women, they lack some of your advantages. But in the new life of God's grace, you're equals. Treat your wives then as equals, so your prayers don't run aground. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. So if when we look at this, uh, this, this is a... Uh, uh, an instruction that's given to uh, to us, to, to the husbands and the wives, uh, is um, that we need to consider each other as equals. Why? Because in the sight of God, God created us as co-heirs. We are co-heirs with Christ. Uh, and when we mean by co-heirs is with all the gifts that he has released on, um, onto us. Okay, so this means the husband and the wife, um, as they stand before each other, stand before God, um, it is to know that they are equal. They are seen as co -heirs, Okay, Because whatever, it, it's he who gives the graces to us. It's he who gives the spiritual uh, grace to each one of us. So we are to look at each other as as equals, just like you would treat anybody else, because we know that that's how God treats us. God sees each of us as equals. Another um, aspect of this, of the truth, is seen in 1 Corinthians 11, 11 to 12. Now, when you look at this verse, it specifically doesn't um, uh, pinpoint at marriage. Okay, It deals with 
uh, other issues which we're not really going to bring about here. But the the two verses that's there, it summarizes what the the um, interdependence or uh, you know being being there for each other or ensuring that both walk together and are able to do things together depending on one another. So they emphasize that God has designed the man and the woman to draw from each other, to be able to be interdependent with, uh, with one another. So if you look at the verse, and I'll read that out, it's from the Good News Bible again, it's in the book. In our life, in the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman was made from man in the same way, man is born of woman, and it is God who brings everything into existence. So uh, the good thing about marriage is the, the, uh, the, the fact that you can draw from each other's strengths, um, and work together as one. So it, it's it's not working parallelly, but drawing from each other, which means you're interdepending on one another. So that's that's what we need to establish before we get into the roles of marriage. That God has created each the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, to be equal, to be a joint heir, and to be interdependent on each other. Now, even as we speak of this, um, the sometimes this concept of being co-equal and joint is um, can some can be a bit challenging for men, especially when we come from a background or a cultural setting or a cultural background where um, uh, uh, where, where generally you know it's it's a patriarchal family where men are considered to be much more important or much more superior than the women so it can be a challenge but what we need to look at is when we look at god's word okay we we align ourselves to what scripture brings about to what scripture teaches us that we need to look at men or women um, the same way God sees us as equal God sees us of the same priority there isn't anyone that he considers better or greater or um, uh, superior inferior he's just created us different and as a result of which because of the difference is why there are different roles and not because one is superior or one is inferior right so to be able to challenge uh, this this understanding and align ourselves to what really God teaches us in scripture is what's important okay so since we've established um, that truth let's get into dive straight into what are some roles uh, of the husband and the roles of the wife so when when we look at establishing these roles we are looking um, uh, even as we're looking at scripture if you would find that a lot of uh, um, a time scripture brings about a parallel between Christ and the church, the relationship or, or how uh, the, the relationship between Christ and the, the relationship between the husband and wife is parallels to what Christ means to the church and the church to, to Christ. So even as we're looking at some of these um, uh, references, we will find that. And we draw our meaning and we draw our understanding uh, from this, okay. So just the way Christ dealt with the church and the church to submits to, to Christ is the same way. Um, it's the same picture that we build here, even in marriages. Okay. So let's look at some of these verses, and from here we will pick up uh, some um, uh, roles that that Scripture has specifically talk, talked about. Okay. Um, uh, so let's look at Ephesians five. 21 to 33, and I won't read the entire um, uh, chapter or the entire portion, but I'd just like to probably pick up uh, where exactly it's put and then, you know, ki kind of build from there. So we will look at Ephesians 5, 21 to 23, and um, some of the um, uh, roles that it brings about for the husbands. We look at the husbands first, and then we'll get looking at the wives. Um, is in and, and I'll read out the verse, and then you could probably underline or just follow through. So I'm in Ephesians five, um, uh, Ephesians five, verse twenty-two. 
Okay, so it says the husband provides a leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So we see, we will, we will unpack this um, in, in a lot more a little later, but I just, I just wanted to pick out some of those verses, right? And then we can talk about that. So here you see that the husband is, is a leader, is, has been called to lead the family because uh, the Lord has placed the husband in a position to be the leader, to, to do the leading. Okay, verse 25 of Ephesians 5, it says, Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for, did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. And if you look through the rest of the verses, it talks of how the love of Christ makes the church whole. And you could, uh, uh, you know, later just go through those verses, meaning that uh, uh, the, the love of Christ is what edifies and builds the church, okay? So husbands are called to love their wives. Verse 31, uh, and this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. So here is a, a place where a husband holds the wife in a regard, just like how you would cherish something that is precious. So you, you, you hold them in regard like a treasure that has, uh, that, that you have from God. Okay. Um, so that's that in Ephesians 5, 21 to 30, uh, 33, we look at Colossians 3, 18 to 19 and Colossians 3, 19 talks. Um, this is what it says. Husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Again, there is an emphasis on uh, on loving, okay? And we will talk about that a uh, little later. Then the next one is First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, it says, be good husbands to your wives, honor them, delight in them. As women, they lack some of your advantages, but in the new life of God's grace, your equals, treat your wives then as equals as your prayers don't run aground. That's a verse that we read up earlier, okay? And verse 8, it sums up and it says, be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. Now that's an instruction that's for everyone, for a man, for a husband and wife. Okay. So uh, that's what we, we, we just, we just will cover in uh, for roles of the husband. I'll just read through those verses again for the wife so that, you know, we kind of pinpoint and understand the role of the wife. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. Here you can see the parallel again, how, uh, how the wives are to support and understand and submit just like you show your submission to Christ. Okay, verse 24 of Ephesians 5. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercises such leaderships, leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Okay, there again is the role of submission. Then verse 33, Ephesians 5 verse 33, and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. It, uh, both of this are there in, the, uh, in this, both the role of the husband and the wife. Looking to Colossians 3, verse 18, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, for that is what you should do as Christians. Uh, moving to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, the same goes for you wives. Be good wives to your husbands, responsive to their needs, they are husbands who, um, indifferent as they are to any words about God, will be captivated by your life of holy beauty. So it's specifically showing of how you submit and yield uh, to, the, to the husband. Okay. Now, these are passages. All of these passages actually describe how, high, how, how the husband and the wife need to relate to one another. And the standard is comparing 
uh, the relationship between Christ and the church. Okay, so um, and if you look at it, they parallelly run together. They actually speak about the same thing. All right. Now, um, when we look at some of these verses, sometimes uh, you know. Uh, we, we ask it, how, how do we do that? But it's God who empowers us to do this. If, when he's put the standard for us, it is, it is the Lord who will, um, who will give us the ability to obey and give us the ability to do according to what he has planned. So, the, so what we need to do is to ensure that we walk or we um, uh, live lives that are in accordance to what God has desired of us and what God has planned for us. So let's summarize some of this. And in, if you look in the notes, it's it's put up pretty clearly. And we'll just look through some of them. So the first one we said is love. And if you see, that's the husband's as well as the wife's role is to love love their wives, love their husbands. So when, when we look at the way Christ loved the church, we see the love of Christ um, from... Uh, from the aspect of being unconditional, meaning there aren't any conditions for that love. That it isn't, uh, I will love you, I will love you if you love me back. It isn't that way, okay? It is, uh, it's a love that comes without looking for anything in return. It's a love that is committed. It is a love that is always there. It's a love that is loyal. So that's what we call as the agape love. Now, if you would know that um, when in English, the word love um, probably has just a single meaning. But when you look at it in, in Greek, there are different terms of that love. So the love, the word love used here in this aspect where the husband loves the wife is the word agape love, which means unconditional love, the way that Christ loved, loved the church, where he sacrificed his life without expecting anything in return. Okay, uh, This kind of a love that you would see is described in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8, you know, the uh, the, the, um, the chapter on love, where it, where it talks about how you love. And that's the same love that the husband were, uh, um, shows to the wife. Okay, Those are the characteristics, and you could read that uh, later. The, the love of Christ to his, to his church is that of a sacrificial love, a love that actually builds up and equips and enriches um, the wife. And that's the love that the husbands are called to have towards the wife, the agape love, the unconditional love. Okay, The second one that we look at is to be the leader, to be the leader of the home. Now, when you look in scripture, you will see that um, uh, Christ has instituted man to be the leader. And uh, it, it, that's, that's the structure of, of God's design for marriage, right? So in, in God's eyes, um, the husband is placed um, uh, in position above the wife, not because of his abilities, to do things, but because it's it's a placement that he's he's put in. He's divinely placed the husband as the head and as the authority of the wife and the authority of the home. Okay, and uh, so this this comes when the um, so that and, and it is kept in such a way so that the husband is able to provide that you know, loving servant leadership to his wife and his family. Okay, so that leadership comes from the example of Christ being the head of the church. Okay, and uh, the uh, the leadership again is based on the example of Christ, on on the way that Christ um, uh, leads the church. So when we look at the the uh, the entire of Scripture, you see the way how Christ dealt with people, how how Christ is coming back. For his church, right? So all of our examples are from the way Jesus deals with 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 his sheep, with his people, and uh, this this leadership, the example of this leadership, um, what you would see in society is um, uh, maybe is, is a very distorted form. But when we are looking at a Christian marriage, it is based on the example of Christ. Okay, so what does this leadership involve? This leadership does involve uh, in taking the responsibility for managing uh, the home, for providing for the home, for for uh, being able to meet the needs of the home, 
to be able to make those important decisions, to gather people at the home, to also um, uh, be the leader, be the spiritual leader of the home. Okay. Now, the leadership of the husband um, has to have the characteristic of love, where the, the husband is a loving leader and not an authoritative leader. Um, and, it, you know, it, if, if you remember, you know, being back in school, uh, you would probably have, um, uh, have the greatest affection for a teacher who's firm, right, rather than a teacher who's, uh, who's extremely um, authoritative, right? But you would have an have a affection to a teacher who's firm, who knows their boundaries, yet is someone who's able, who's loving and who is caring in, in the way that they interact. So uh, a husband earns the, the, the wife's uh, submission by being a person or by being a man of, uh, of, uh, of, of a strong character, of a strong uh, nature, or uh, of being able to sh be the right example. So that's where that leadership com comes from. Now, being a leader, a husband being a leader, it may not mean that the husband may always be right. And it is important that the husband walks um, humbly and uh, uh, is willing to take uh, the, uh, the uh, opinions of his wife, be able to take whatever points she may have for, for any decision or for, for any specific um, instance, taking her points or her opinions into consideration and be willing to acknowledge that that uh, you know that that is that is also right so and that's what we see in scripture in Ephesians 5:21 we read that being able to submit to one another so it comes from that where even that the husband can draw from the from the uh, expertise or the opinions of the wife and that it is perfectly okay because you are called to submit to one another Okay. Other uh, roles that you would say is you would see here is um, how the husband needs to nourish his wife. Uh, nourishing means to be able to um, speak into or to to ensure that they encourage or uh, strengthen or to empower them to be and to build themselves up uh, to be, to follow through the purposes of what God has in store for the wife. Okay. Nourish also means to um, to give to give to his wife uh, in all all aspects, be it physically, be it emotionally, be it spiritually. Nourish is to um, is to help to grow, is help to grow to a certain direction. Just like how you nourish a plant with what it needs, right? It needs water, sunlight, fertilizer, so that it will it will grow. It will it will uh, thrive well. And that's exactly what um, a husband is called to do to his wife. The next one is to cherish. Cherish means to hold as something valuable, just like how you'd gift a gift. You'd get a gift that is probably quite expensive or, or a gift from somebody you really consider, um, uh, uh, consider um, close to you. What you would do is you would cherish it. Right? You wouldn't let it rot or you wouldn't let it here and there carelessly. So how does a husband, a wife, uh, 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 a husband cherish his wife is by communicating to her, is by uh, helping her see that she is, she is valuable, by helping her um, in, in the everyday things of life, ensuring that there is a helping hand to her by being able to set an example of uh, uh, of uh, setting an example of how he pursues God, right? So the, these uh, or again, cherishes is also building together the relationship and uh, bringing about intimacy. So that is what a husband is called to do: to cherish his wife. The other two um, things is how you know and honor the wife. Knowing and honor the wife is um, knowing her is to really understand, see what they like what they don't like what pleases them what displeases them knowing what their um, uh, their desires are what they would like to do that's what knowing is to really engage with them uh, so that uh, so that you, the the husband knows what exactly uh, the person is okay the next one is honor 
honor them, honoring them is to hold them in high regard or to uh, or to really respect who they are as people and uh, uh, also to um, uh, hone their gifts or whatever talents that they carry so this is what we see in in the husband um, yeah, the roles of the husband okay if you look at the book um, now this is a very practical book so if you look at the book there are uh, certain places where you can you can actually think about ways um, you can fulfill these roles certain practical ways <clears throat> you can fulfill these roles so you know for those of you um, who aren't yet married you know this is one way to do that and those of you who are you know you could build on whatever you're doing the next one we look at is the role of the wife what is the role of the wife now the wife is also called to love the husband uh, and this love if you if the word the greek word that you look at um, uh, that the base comes from is what is called the filial love the filial love is the love of a companion the love of a friend okay so the this word is used uh, to show that you are your husband's best friend or a companion or a helper right and and you love like like you would love a companion and this comes again also from a uh, from a place of unconditional acceptance to be able to accept them despite their failures despite uh, their shortcomings and this acceptance is not really you do not just accept them because they've done what they were supposed to do but you accept them because you recognize that they carry the their image bearers they carry the worth and the dignity that god's put on them okay so not just not just accepting them for what they accomplish or what they do or how they look but for uh, for the worth that God's put inside of them, the value that God has placed inside of them. Okay, uh, even the love for um, the love of a wife to a husband is also sacrificial, and it is demonstrated through your service, demonstrated through your uh, your your place to be available or willing to help or to respond to the needs of the husband. Okay, it's also uh, being responsive to whatever needs that they may have that's where we see the love that comes for the wife's role the next we're going to look at is um, being able to submit now what submission means um, to be able to uh, yield to the husband um, and show that kind of support and show that kind of um, the fact that you are there to support and to help him along life's journey. So this is again, this comes from uh, the the willingness to submit comes from the recognition that God is the one who's appointed the husband as the head over the home. It comes from that obedience, obediently submitting because you recognize that that's the placement that the husband has and and you stand in as a person who who um, walks walks in submission to them so when you as a wife submit what you are also doing is you are helping your husband to take on that specific role you're empowering your husband to take on the role of a leader you're willingly uh, supporting and helping your husband fulfill that role because um, he's going to be called or he's going to be asked about what he's done as the way that he raises his family and as a wife it's important to be able to submit to that because of what God has placed the placement that he has it will free him of uh, of doing what he needs to do as a leader okay so uh, we looked at what submission is let's also look at what submission um, is not when, when when submission is definitely not being inferior submission is not uh, that you lose who you are your uh, your traits your the kind of person you are your desires it doesn't mean that that you lose your identity and it doesn't mean also blind ob obedience that you give yourself up to be abused or uh, to be totally manipulated or used because of that role. So it comes together. It comes hand in hand. The submission and the leadership uh, comes hand in hand. So uh, having 
having understood that to be able to submit, it is by submitting, you do what you're doing is demonstrating your support and also keeping in mind that uh, you recognize that God has placed your husband in such a role. And for you, there is a there, for you as a wife, there is a role of submission, of yielding to that leadership. Okay. The last two is respecting, respecting the husband and helping the husband. So respecting um, means to be able to hold with uh, 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 with honor, holding up with honor. So it in the ways that it is practically seen is when uh, you uh, you encourage and you appreciate and you're ensuring that you. Um, uh, celebrate the person that your husband is right through the differences that, that you may see from you, being able to celebrate and honor that. It also means um, uh, to um, give encouragement, to also uh, means to admire. Uh, you know, I it, this is something that I, I read in a book of, and I thought it's, it's uh, really nice of how when you treat someone with respect, there are three aspects of treating them. You need to have a head of respect, you need to have a heart of respect, and you need to have hands of respect. So the head of respect is the way that you think about your husband, or uh, the heart of respect is the way that you feel towards your husband, and the hand of respect is what you do for your husband. So it starts from the way that you think about your husband. So every time, uh, you know, maybe something has gone wrong at home or, you know, they don't, they fall short of certain expectations you may have. There are certain thoughts that keep running in your mind. Uh, and uh, that's important to change. That's important to renew, uh, you know, to be able to think of him as a God-given gift, to, be, to think of him as, a, as a, a precious gift, as a good thing that God's provided for you, despite the differences that you see. So it starts with the respecting a uh, head of respect and then moving on to the heart of respect. So the more that you think about them as the way God thinks of them, you will begin to feel a sense of love and respect and cherishing and uh, honoring. And once you're able to feel that, then you're able to serve them genuinely, serve them uh, well, okay. So just uh, just those three aspects is something that may I just just added. And the fourth one is to be is to be a helper. And helper is to stand as an as a comrade, as an aid for needs by assisting, by supporting, and encouraging uh, things that the husband does. So um, these are these are the certain roles. So for the husband, it's to love, it's to nourish to cherish, to lead, to know, and to honor. And for the wife, it's to love, to submit, to respect, and to help. OK? Now, um, even as we've read through this, yes, God has given each of us a role, and he has described how it should be, it should be done. So uh, what, what we should be looking at is to continuously grow into being that kind of a spouse that God has ordained for us, despite the, despite seeing the flaws or the limitations we have. So when we see that when the spouse, when the husband fulfills his role, when the wife fulfills her role, the, the marriage is more in the way God has designed it to be and it is and it works towards unity and it works towards that oneness, okay? All right, I'll just stop here for any questions that uh, y'all may have. Any questions? <clears throat> or any thoughts? You don't have to have questions. You can give uh, any thoughts, maybe some things that <clears throat> you knew differently, you understood differently, and maybe this has challenged you and um, really stirred your heart. So it doesn't have to be a question. It can also be a comment or a, or a thought or a reflection. Yeah, some, some interactions so that I know everybody is on the other side and awake. Something uh, that was really um, helpful for me was about when you mentioned about the 
head of respect and the heart and the hand so many times uh, we think like you know we have to do it and that's why we do it but when we really think highly of them like no matter what has happened or there might be some small things that might be going on but we don't think highly and we don't feel great and mm-hmm. when we things no it's not it's not actually coming out of the heart and even jesus is also displeased in the thing but when we actually know the truth you know it's god who wants me to respect and admire and it is god who has given him certain values and it is not because he has to fit into my thinking and my way of life but i just have to value him because god has given me the best and highly that feeling and that doing that was that was really useful to me Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's nice. Yes, it it really touched my heart as well. That's why I shared it. Wonderful. Anybody else? One more person. Hello. Yes, Anand. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Shantan. I'm pleading for the class. Uh, my thing is, I wanted to say when it comes to submitting nowadays, right? Uh, yes, men, uh, men do have a part with the, with the part. Mostly, when it comes to like marriage, from this, most women feel like it's uh, uh, very hard. Anand, you're not very clear. I'm sorry, I can't follow what you're saying. Uh, can you come closer to the mic, please? And that close I can be there. Yeah, is it okay okay just speak a little slower because i because it's a lot of echo i'm not able to clearly hear just speak a little slower uh my name is Sean when not added okay you're somebody else i'm sorry okay <laughs> all right i don't know who that is but him okay. we are speaking in class uh well i'm speaking from class now okay i i understood your calling from class yeah go ahead go ahead i heard like so what i want to say is when it comes to like marriage uh, nowadays uh, we really see that, of course, the husband has certain problems when it comes to it, but we also see from the wife also comes, they have certain problems that coming in the marriage, having a relationship uh, with the husband. It, it, it is usually a balance, uh, usually a proper balance is how we see in our regular marriage. But the thing is, most wives feel that they should have some heat or they should have some the authority when it comes to the marriage, what we see here. Uh, both okay, is there anyone else who's understood the question? Because I, I don't think I could have, I have followed. Anyone else understood uh, the question? Can you hear me now, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yes. Uh, huh. Once again. Yes. Uh, what I want to say is when it comes to a marriage nowadays, you uh, see that there's usually an um, imbalance in, in power from both the husband and w- wife said. As in what I want to say is that usually there used to be an equal amount of understanding, equal amount of respect. But now it seems that uh, from the wife's side, they need more power or more authority, that they want to be the head rather than the husband. And the husbands too, what happens is that they become less, you know, that they become submissive under the husband. It's not more like an equal share of power or an equality between them is what I wanted to say. Okay. Okay, thank you. And who's speaking, please? Is that, you, didn't, you didn't hear, ma'am, again? No, no, I heard, I heard. Who's speaking? Uh, my name is Sean. Sean. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, okay. so uh, um, uh, thank you. So, so, I mean, I could hear you right now. So you're right, Sean, that when you look at, uh, at the world today, and especially um, if, you, if you look at uh, a current culture, the, the kind of culture that that is being built up is you know with with the uh, uh, with women being more um, you know getting into a workforce uh, women you know with with a lot more of opportunities that are there for women yes women also are um, are, are doing well in life however um, the idea that they can do things you know without a man or they can do things without the instruction of a man has come as a result of a lot of uh, wrong doctrines Um, you know the kind of movements that are there speaking of uh, you know women can do things without uh, without the requirement of a man all of that brings about a severe division between men and women right and and then it becomes a very competitive 
kind of uh, uh, experience. But the word of God, uh, you know, is so graceful that he he wants each person, man or woman, to be able to grow according to the way he's created them, right? And uh, for us to understand that and live by it, is sure there's, there is surely a blessing, right? When you see this entire structure, I'd call it some kind of a structure, like the husband being the head, the woman being um, uh, being submissive to the husband. When that structure is is in play or is carried out as according to God's plan, the blessing of the Lord is there. When you see that this gets toppled, uh, and sometimes you would see it the other way, where, where the woman is holding the greater authority and the man, um, you know, just just just. Uh, uh, you know, buckles under that or doesn't take on the responsibility and then it becomes like a pattern, you would see that uh, there are ch challenges and consequences that come. So what God has instituted is, is in a way for everyone to have a blessing through that. Okay. So what you did say is right and that, that is what we see is evident and that's why we align ourselves to what God has spoken about. We align ourselves to bring back uh, and rebuild that kind of a structure. And this structure, again, like I said, does not show inferiority or superiority. Each person has a role, and we play that role. It's just like if you were in a company um, where, you, where you have a manager above you and you report to them, there is a certain structure. And that's that. That's usually my question to couples. You know, if in a company you know that there is a structure like this, and you submit to that structure, um, how much more we should be submitting to the structure that God has instituted in the family, right? Because it's for the growth and the well-being of the family. Yeah. So thank you, Sean, for that. I I think that was that was just a statement, and it wasn't a question. Okay. All right. So. Um, uh, so if, if, you know, especially for uh, for all of us who are married and those who are waiting to be married, uh, there is um, on page, um, I think it's 45 on page, yes, yes, you, uh, Anand, Anand or Sean, whoever is on that side of the class. Pastor, this is Rin speaking. <laughs> yes, Rin. Yes, go ahead, Rin. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just a comment. Um, like what what I observed was uh, from where um, it says to love as Christ loves. I mean, obviously, only God can show this kind of agape love, unconditional love. But like He wants us to implement that with with um, a partner or uh, with our husband. And yeah, that's something that's hard from both sides. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's why we look to God for the equipping. And it, it's uh, you're right that it is it is difficult, it is hard, but the Lord equips. Okay. Um, so for those of you all who are interested, and you know, I, I'd really challenge you all to do, especially those who are married, uh, is to go through that um, uh, that entire page on the First Corinthians thirteen. It talks about what love is and how you could express it. To your spouse. You know, it says love is patient, love is kind, it's not jealous, not arrogant, not proud. What are some practical ways in which you can uh, do that? And so if you would like to um, you know, do that, it, it's like a small little assignment that you all can do. Okay. Uh, the next portion that we're going to be looking at is how um, as ministry leaders or as people who um, are involved in the church community, or we are uh, in in certain uh, um, positions of leadership in the church, and for all of us as ministers, because we are all ministers, right? How what what is the responsibilities that we have is something that we will we will look at because uh, there are uh, a lot of verses that talks about. Um, because we are much more accountable to God, right? When when we are following Christ, when we are in a place where we are speaking into the lives of others, um, our accountability, our standards are much greater. So we will look at that when we come back um, after a break. So it's 10.49, 10.50 on my clock. 
We will be back in 10 minutes at 11. So you can grab yourselves a cup of coffee and come back. See you soon.